Welcome to Gothic Homemaking. Today is an auspicious occasion. We have a special guest, Mr. Logan South, the Vampire King of Austin, Texas. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad to be here. It's not every day I get to interview a vampire in Gothic Homemaking. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm very excited to be here. I've known you for so long. I've never actually been inside your house. It's, well, it's so, you know, and I've so known great. you for so long, which is to say that a lot of the questions I would ask you are things I already know, they're things you already know. Right. So I'm going to take a page out of the Fox News rule book. As you know, I was interviewed by Fox News uh, when I wrote the book, What is Goth? I think you were too. At some I was, point. I was. Uh, they asked really muggly questions like, do you worship Satan and things like that. <laughs> so and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ask you muggly questions. Yeah, because, I can't worship Satan. It would be narcissistic. You, oh, well, that's a whole other story <laughs> for a whole other day. Uh, but I'm going to ask you questions for the general public that are interested in uh, the vampire lifestyle. All right. Are perfect. game? Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Question number one, it's on everybody's minds. Are you a real vampire? Uh, real as in, like, I exist. You can touch me. Definitely not a figment of my imagination. Not a figment of your imagination. But you know, people You know, people come up to me in bars all the time and they're like, are you like a real vampire? I've been there when that's <laughs> happened. And yes, I am a real vampire. I, 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 I have, well, I've always been very tangible, but other than that, yes, uh, I am someone who requires an alternative source of human energy in which to sustain their health and well-being, and that is the most traditional definition of vampirism when it comes to being a real vampire. So it might be blood, it might be energy, it might be something else? Yes, uh, the energy from blood, the energy from another person, ambient energy from a crowd, or the sexual energy produced from arousal, all good means of feeding for a vampire, and I, I'm very much a vampire. So in one way, shape, or form, you must feed off of humans. That's correct. And that is the definition for you? That is it. That is the, that's, that's the one. And I guess by that definition, we've got a real vampire in the lair. Right here. When did you discover that you were a vampire? I had my vampiric awakening, awakening is the term that we use in the community, when I was 15 years old. And like any 15 year old, I ran off like an asshole with that. No, no 15 year old is smart or well prepared nope. for the world, but when you throw in that little bit of uh, you know, esoteric uh, discovery of self, then that really muddles things even farther. And uh, so yeah, uh, when I was 15 years old, that was, the, that was the first moment that I had that. And as I grew older and wiser and did a whole bunch of back and forth and denial of what that was, after running around like an asshole with it, I came to terms with myself and with what that should be and really researched it and put it to page and found that it was something not only deeply personal for me but for a lot of other people uh, across the United States and across the world. Uh, and people like uh, Michel Belanger who wrote the incredible Psychic Vampire Codex really put it to words that I hadn't even discovered for myself yet and finding all of this information opened up a whole new doorway for me on what I felt uh, about vampirism, what it was, what it could be, and then I dedicated myself to being the best vampire that I could be. I think you're a mighty fine vampire. Why, thank you, sir. But I think that experience is very similar for lots of us who live alternative lifestyles in one way or the other. When you're a teenager and you start to realize, like, I'm not like these other people in this right. town. For me, it took running away from home and discovering the goth scene in New York City and you right. find a like-minded group of people who love and respect you for who you are. Yep. And it seems like you went through a lot of the same things in Jersey that I went through back home in Texas uh, and uh, we've compared notes. And uh, it's I'm glad we found our broods. Absolutely. <laughs> and to any of you out there who are still looking, just know that it's, it, you know, it's okay that it takes time and it's okay to feel what you feel and just keep doing and keep being you. Whether you're 15 or 52, go out there and find your tribe. Absolutely. Cheers. Not over. Are you immortal? No, I'm not immortal. No. <laughs> I have to ask. It'd be really cool if I said yes, but no, I'm not immortal. Uh, immortality, I believe, is something that is gained through the actions that you that you create in this life and the way that it impacts the world after that. I, uh, I've never known a vampire that is immortal. Uh, I've never known a re re real vampire that is actually claimed to be a mortal. I was just gonna say, I know some vampires yeah. by name who must be immortal because there's no end to those pricks. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm not, I'm not immortal. I don't claim to be immortal. I think uh, vampirism is just another extension of 
uh, humanity and the way that we uh, personally receive uh, and, and give uh, of ourselves uh, into our own human experience. But the art that we make can be immortal, and so if an anthropologist is watching this video thousands of years from now, then we have achieved immortality. We're, that's it. We're, we're immortal. This is forever. That's how you do it. The internet is forever. <laughs> that's unfortunately <laughs> true. You are the king of the vampires of Austin, Texas. I am the king of the vampire court of Austin, Texas. What does it take to become the king of vampires? So in my case, about seven years ago, I started a series of events in North Austin. Uh, that would then later become what I did for a living in my company, but it was all just built on creating uh, a vampire themed event that I just personally liked and I thought other people would like. And then, wouldn't you know it, all the vampires came out of the woodwork and started showing up. And after a while, they got to talking about community. And then suddenly, said, somebody said, Oh, uh, well, if we're good, we, we haven't had a vampire court in, in 15 years, and we should do another one. And if we do another one, Logan should be the king of, of that court. And, and I. I, they, they come up to me and they go, oh, Logan, you you should do this. You should be the, the new king of this court. And I said, no. So you're a reluctant king? I did not want to do it. I had seen the worst of the worst of it before. Where but I, are you a benevolent king? I, I mean, I, I just simply want to do the best for my community. And I, I, want, to, I want to make that as, as uh, good of a, I don't know, that. Uh, do I, do I say I want to be a role model? I, I don't know if you I can? want to. Maybe to, to the other community members, to, to what we have. I, I want to show what a, uh, a good community can accomplish with uh, the simplistic notions of democracy and camaraderie and understanding mm. and interconnection to your local communities outside of just that. Connecting with, with the, the people around you, the city around you, is very important. Personal so there you go. If you build it, they will come. If you make some vampire events, the vampires will show up, and who knows, maybe they'll make you their king. <laughs> Long live the king! Oh. <laughs> a question I think a lot of people have for vampires is, do you drink blood? Are you, are you offering? I am not offering. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> yes, I do drink blood. Yes, I, I am someone that believes in embracing multiple paths. Uh, and as we discussed earlier, there are multiple paths to feeding for a vampire. You have an energy vampire that can take directly the energy from one person or ambient energy from a crowd or the uh, sexual energy produced from arousal. doesn't have to be sex, just the energy from arousal or the sanguinary vampire that can take the energy from blood. And I believe in embracing all of those, and I do. I have a live-in donor, uh, my girlfriend, Alona, who is absolutely wonderful and beautiful, and my wife, Daly, and I feed from her uh, regularly in all of those various forms. And uh, I think that uh, if you are a vampire and you are capable of doing such, to embrace all paths to create a balance, and because you can't always get that one thing here or there, but if you just kind of blend it out. So, you know. so can I come over for brunch sometime? Absolutely. <laughs> for a Bloody Mary? Oh, <laughs> for a Bloody Mary. This is a question about a question. Oh. What is the strangest question someone's asked you about being a vampire? Uh, well, I don't know if it's necessarily a question, per se, uh, but uh, uh, more of a demand, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I would. Uh, so as you know, I've done some reality TV and all that stuff, and you know, uh, I do the YouTube thing now, like you do, and uh, so people have, you know, you know what it's like. You of all people would know what it's like to have fans come up to you and ask you really weird shit, strange requests. Yeah, and so one day I'm standing on the porch of Elysium, just you know, minding my business, having a cigarette and a drink or whatever, and this this woman runs up to me and she goes, "Oh my God, you're you're that vampire." I went, well, I'm, I'm a vampire. And she goes, well, no, 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 you're that vampire. You're that vampire from, that, from the from the TVs. And I went, I, yeah, I've done some TV. And she goes, no, 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 hey, hey, you're, bite me. Just clears it, bite me. And I was, ah, uh, I don't know about the, you know, I don't know where you're next. Man. You know, we haven't really talked, you know, that's a, that's a strange So, so you're, you're kind of a picky vampire. You're a picky eater. Well, you know, I just, I like a little hygiene and I don't, I, no offense to this lovely lady who ran up. I, I just didn't know. Like we were feet apart and, you know, most of that was because I had a bouncer between us. But anyway, so uh, I just didn't know where she had. Did you explain to her she wasn't going to sparkle in the, in the sunlight? I explained that to everyone who asked. Yes, absolutely. There's, there's a glitter-free zone. 
As a vampire king, uh, you could, because there are communities all over the country, you know, there's a vampire scene here, there's several courts in New York City. Right. What can you tell us about the uh, vampire scene in Austin? So, the Vampire Court of Austin is one of the largest vampire communities in the United States, if not the world. Uh, we created a very different format than what was seen before. We started the modern court system for the vampire community about seven years ago. Before that, there were very few courts and they very much structured themselves on a monarchy basis. There was a lot of bowing and scraping, bend the knee, kiss the ring kind of thing. Same lots of that. And so that was not something that we were into and we decided to establish a system of democracy and create a modern court system for a modern vampire community. And in doing so, we, we created something that not only blossomed uh, the Austin community, but that we found all of these other communities across the U.S. and across the world started forming uh, this, the same type of thing, the same type of court format using our laws and tenets uh, and, and putting it forward there, creating democratic societies. And uh, to this day, you know, Austin has, Austin has now kind of become, uh, you know, the new mecca of, of uh, the vampire. And we were really happy to see so many people really take that idea and run with it. And now you can, you can find more Austin, or more vampires anywhere uh, in, in Austin than anywhere. And it's... You know, that's what I don't like about Santa Clara, right? <laughs> <laughs> All the goddamn vampires. <laughs> So if, if uh, somebody is interested in the vampire scene and they and they show up at one of your events in Austin, are they going to find sort of like a wall of people judging them or are they going to be welcomed? Are they going to find friendly people there? I can tell you that if you come to Austin, Texas, come out to one of my events, uh, Austin Vampire Ball, something like that, and uh, if you come out to one of uh, the events that we have, you will find the most uh, incredible, uh, welcoming, happy, friendly vampires that you've ever seen in your life. Uh, we are a very welcoming community to everyone, not just vampires, but to everyone. So there you have it, Austin vampires are friendly vampires. Friendly. I just recently did an episode of Gothic Homemaking where I featured all of the different coffin shaped items in here. And as you might imagine in a Gothic lair, you know, coffin shapes are a bit ubiquitous. Have you ever slept in a coffin? I have. You have? I have slept in a coffin, yes. What was that like? I absolutely loved it. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I love the sensory deprivation of it. Uh, you know, I'm someone who who really likes to sleep, and, you know, in a in a pure, blissful, serene darkness uh, without sound. Without it's definitely going to be dark in there, right? Oh yeah, you know, you can close that lid. But I could, I I don't line. think I can sleep in a coffin because I sleep in the fecal position. That's what it's called, right? Fe fecal. Is it the, the fecal. No, it's, it's not a typo. I sleep. <laughs> I sleep. I'm kidding. I'm a little concerned for your sheets. Yes, as you should be. Uh, I sleep in the fetal position. I, I want to have my legs crossed and I want to have my little wubby. I want to hold my little bat. You have, you have a my, yeah, I have a little bat plush that I hold when I sleep. Aww, yeah, that's cute. That's adorable. I and I don't think that I can do that in a coffin. I mean, you could if you got a... If you like had, a double wide? Yeah, double wide coffin. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> coffin for two? All right, you, caught, you talked me into it. Okay. I'll give it a shot. Perfect. And then I get to stay in it. Right? Well, uh, you're going to have to talk to your wife and your girlfriend. I get to talk oh, they're fine. They're fine with that? Oh, yeah. Well, things just got colorful here at the Lair of Voltaire. You know, you just screw the rest of the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out of here. Okay. Finish this sentence. Okay. It would make me joyful if people knew and celebrated about me that... That... Uh... Daly and I have been spending the last several years of our lives uh, dedicated to... Daly uh, is your wife. Daly is my wife, yes. Uh, dedicated to the pursuit of growing the vampire community and making it something that is more than just insulary. We wanted to really connect our community to the city itself and to everyone else. I never feel a reason that we should be disconnected, that we should be insulary, that we should be hidden. I wanted to be very transparent with that and in doing so, that we've been trying very hard to connect that community together across the U.S. and to see a day when they can connect to their local communities and their cities and can be as openly and easily accepted as we are in ours. Fantastic. That's an excellent pursuit. It's not every day I get to interview a vampire at the Lair of Voltaire. And I will thank you for not biting me because if you had turned me into a vampire, then... 
I set that one up for you. I, I let him have that one. <laughs> Thanks again for coming. I Absolutely really appreciate brother. it. Cheers. Anytime. Be well. Narok. Is this blood?